Eight News. Day after the gruesome murder of rapper Beanie Siegel's stepfather, a friend of the family now disappears. Ripped apart by Hurricane Katrina, not to mention the war in Iraq, a family reunites in South Jersey. We're live with that story. Plus, the fly guys back on the ice tonight in South Philadelphia. I'm Kyle Schmoyer. All the hoopla, fire and ice straight ahead as CNA News at 10 this Wednesday night. It starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Arthur Fennell. And I'm Kevin Walsh. Thanks for joining us tonight. First to 10, the horrific murder of one man, and then a day later, his friend is abducted. Police won't say yet if the crimes are connected to each other, but it's hard not to wonder if it is some kind of a violent vendetta with a bit of a celebrity twist. Sam Derry III, the stepfather of rapper Beanie Siegel, was shot and set a fire yesterday in Philadelphia. Then today's abduction. CNA's Daryl Carver sorts it all out. <laughs> Police tow away Sam Derry's 91 Oldsmobile to check it for any clues in his murder. Derry, the stepfather of rap musician Beanie Siegel, was found Tuesday in an alleyway behind Forest Avenue. He was shot repeatedly, his body then set on fire. All this happened just a week after Siegel was acquitted on charges of attempted murder. Beanie, as well as his family, um, have been devastated uh, by this series of events. Uh, and it's their hope uh, that whoever was involved or responsible for this brutal killing is brought to justice. I believe he was killed someplace else and transported there and dropped off. The gruesome events surrounding Derry's death were a topic of conversation among many who knew him, including Wallace Moody. You know, he's just talking, it was crazy, that, you know, what happened to Sam. The next bizarre twist involved Moody, whom police say was kidnapped at 541 Wednesday morning just outside of his home in North Philadelphia. By two black males were both armed with guns who arrived in two separate dark-colored vehicles. Mr. Mr. Moody was forced into one of the vehicles and taken from that location. He's just been doing his job from him, you know, working and just trying to do all the right thing. So it was real crazy. It's a small world, but none of this could possibly be something that i mean any relationship you know to someone getting abducted and someone else getting you know murdered and stuff like that that's just a tra tragedy both of them while police won't confirm any connection between the two cases beyond these two crime victims knowing one another neighbors say all of these developments leave them stunned and confused i can't imagine what this could possibly be or has happened or anything like that it's no i mean i'm just baffled Philadelphia police also towed away Moody's car to examine it for prints and other evidence that may help them find his kidnappers. Reporting from Philadelphia Police Headquarters, Daryl Carver, CN8 News. Supreme Court nominee Harry Myers is getting a much colder reception from senators than the president had hoped for. What's more, a lot of it's coming from conservative Republicans, a group the president can usually count on for support. Mississippi Senator Trent Law today joined other Republicans in calling Myers underqualified. Republican Senator John Thune of South Dakota agreed with Lott, saying he just doesn't know much about her. Even though she likely faces tough questioning, Myers is expected to be confirmed by the Senate. Meanwhile, recently confirmed Chief Justice John Roberts heard his first major case on the high court, and it was a very emotional one. The high court heard arguments between the government and the state of Oregon. The issue is Oregon's Death with Dignity Act, which gives doctors the right to administer lethal drugs to terminally ill patients who have less than six months to live. Chief Justice Roberts challenged attorneys on both sides of the case, but outside the court, people debated their own views. You know when death is upon you. I want to be able to die with some dignity. If you want to commit suicide, you really should have the, the honor and the dignity to do it yourself and not take the doctors with you. No timetable on a decision has been set, but what happens here could affect states beyond Oregon. At the Pentagon today, a top analyst with expertise in the Middle East pleaded guilty to spying. Lawrence A. Franklin confessed to leaking classified information to an Israeli embassy official and members of a pro-Israel lobbying group. The 58-year-old Franklin said that he was frustrated with the government and he hoped that the lobbying group could use its influence and its connections to influence the U.S. policy. He will be sentenced in January. 
Aside from it being against the law, some people in Delaware thought pythons, alligators, and snapping turtles would make good pets. Either their conscience got the best of them or they simply got tired taking care of the exotic pets. So what now? CNA's Justin Gray has that story. A gator on the lookout, a snake ready to strike. It's not the Discovery Channel, but the animal shelter. Along with barking dogs and purring cats, Delaware's SPCA is overloaded with animals that slither instead of snuggle. One or two is not a major problem, but the, the uh, oddity of this is the volume and the variety and all at one time. This guy is a ball python. Now you can buy him at your local pet store, but he is illegal to own here in Delaware. They're all in this room because they, they are all illegal to have. They've all been confiscated. The owners have been fined because if it's not native to Delaware, you can't have it without a special permit. Even if you have a permit, there's a Newcastle County ordinance that states that you cannot have an exotic animal in a residential area. At pet care, the warning is posted on the wall. No permit, no pet. As soon as you walk in, they'll say it's illegal to have them. Show me a permit if you want me to sell them to you. And as the sign says, those permits are hard to come by. Really, it's easier to get a handgun. But these reptiles are coming from somewhere. The SPCA says a lot of pet stores aren't following the law. You're supposed to obtain a permit, and I think that's kind of an afterthought, and that's what bothers me. Because these pets are piling up, and they're running out of cages to put them in. A lot of people love them. But in Delaware, they can't have them. In Newark, Delaware, Justin Gray, CN8 News. The SPCA has found a home for the reptiles, a place down south called Alligator Alley. It's agreed to take all 14 reptiles. Well, it has been two years now since a deadly parking garage collapse and an Atlantic City casino has now settled the lawsuits stemming from that accident. Today, the Tropicana Casino and Resort settled seven lawsuits. You'll recall that it was four men who were killed and 20 others injured when the top five floors of that garage, which was under construction at the time, came crashing down. So far, the amounts of the settlements and the names of those who will be receiving the money have not been released, but a total of 35 suits were filed after that collapse. It's Flyers pandemonium in Philadelphia. Hockey's back and it's a welcome return to the ice after last season was put on ice. CNH Kyle Schmoyer is live at Chickies and Pete's in South Philadelphia where he was hoping to celebrate with the fans but then something happened with the Rangers didn't it Kyle? Yeah, it wasn't supposed to start this way. Yeah, you know, fans a little bit disappointed. Not off to the start that they all expected this evening. Their fly guys actually losing to the Rangers 5-3 to three this evening. But, you know, having said that, even before the game, during the game, and a little bit after, there was still a whole lot of cup talk. Let's go, fly! Flyers fans may have taken a year and a half off, but clearly they're in mid-season form, and it's only game one. It's amazing. Last year was horrible. I didn't know what to do with myself. Now I have my nights back. It's great. I was raised on hockey. I'm from Eastern Europe. I've watched it since I was four years old, so the last year and a half have been rough, but it's nice to have hockey back. No tickets to see the game in person? <laughs> then Chicky and Pete's in South Philly is the place to be. It's great. I love it. I'm, I, it's the only sport I care about. It gives us the city something to look forward to, a winning team. What about the Eagles? Well, I'm an Eagles fan too, but hockey comes first. For many hockey fanatics, this is the only game in 10. You either love hockey or you don't. And if you love it, you're really, really passionate about loving it. So that's what, that's what I love about the sport, that it's such a, a raw, true, so here's the big question. How far does this 0506 edition of the Fly Guys go? Bottom line, if we're healthy and going into the playoffs, we win the Stanley Cup and we have a parade right down that way. Anything less, I'm not happy. We got it. Let's go Flyers. Yeah, let's go Flyers. You know the guy talking about that parade down Broad Street. Yeah, that's just around the corner here, but folks... There's a long time, a long way until we get to that point. A lot of the fans saying this evening, just as the game wrapped up, okay, this is just a little stumble out of the gate. Don't worry, we're going to win the rest. One guy said he only thinks there's going to be 8 to 10 losses for the entire year. Well, there's already one in the loss column, so that means there has to be a whole lot of other wins. But for a lot of the fans, they're just happy. The puck, the hockey stick, the ice, the players, the fights out on the ice, it's all back. Hockey is here, and a lot of people say... That's exactly the way they want it. We're live tonight in South Philadelphia. Kyle Schmoyer, CN8 News. A lot of energy, Kyle. 81 more games. I hope everybody can sustain it.
Thanks, partner. Exactly. <laughs> you got it. Still ahead on CNA News at 10. I'm meteorologist Gina Cancellari, and we do, in fact, have a tropical storm that made landfall tonight headed in this general direction. Full details on your forecast coming up on CNA. Also tonight on CNA, a teacher thought a beeping insulin pump was a cell phone and tried to take it away from a student. The call to duty is very strong in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, but it comes with a price, as you'll see in a special report coming up. And if you thought Tom Cruise was happy when he got engaged to Katie Holmes, find out why he's very happy again. We'll be right back. You're watching CNA News at 10, only on the Comcast Network. On demand, how would you keep me entertained? I've got thousands of things to show you. We can get started whenever you want. Okay. And DVR? Your schedule is my schedule. And satellite? Can I pass? <laughs> Jill? I can't decide between on-demand and DVR. Since you have Comcast Digital Cable, you can choose both. I can? And here's how. Comcast Digital Cable with on-demand. Now available with DVR. Your TV never had it so good. Ladies and gentlemen, no, it's me, Jackie Mason. You think you're waiting for jokes? What was I talking about just now? I got news for you. You'll hear a lot of jokes, but it won't be just empty-headed comedy. It will be about the news. Is that too short? You want entertainment? You could get it with the news from Jackie Mason on CNA. Why would they crack on the audience? I think it's just Every minute of it is going to be colorful, dynamic, entertaining, and it has a whole of things to The Jackie Mason Show, Saturday, 11.30 p.m. Eastern on CNA, the Comcast Network. Confused by the claims DSL's been making? Blah, blah, fast. Blah, blah, cool. Look, the fact is, Comcast high-speed internet blows DSL away. We're talking speeds up to five times faster. More speed means you can do more online. With exclusive features that, well, DSL just doesn't have. So if you're settling for DSL, you're getting left behind. No wonder more people across America choose Comcast high-speed internet. Call 1-888-COMCAST today. There's more trouble in the tropics thanks to two new storms. The first is Hurricane Stan, which has now weakened to a tropical depression after hitting Central America. Already, nearly 100 people have died because of that storm, and many of them died in landslides as a result. Uh, that number is expected to climb, however, much higher. And Tropical Storm Tammy is also causing some rough surf along the Florida coast. You can check out the waves crashing in Cocoa Beach. Forecasters there expect Tammy to dump heavy rains on Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. And some tornadoes could also spin off from that system. Gene Cancellari is here now, and it won't be long before we see some uh, pretty heavy weather ourselves. Maybe not yeah. as bad as down in Florida, but, uh, but a result of some of that. Sure, much-needed rain is what we're oh, talking about. Yeah, we we're, yeah, we are in a big-time deficit as far as rain goes, and we will get it. It's just the systems are slowing down now. We thought once it would happen, you know, on Wednesday, then Thursday. Now it looks like the forecast models are all saying Friday, Saturday morning, best time we're going to see the rain. And we're talking up to four inches in some areas. Oh, so this is going to be great. Yeah, we need it. So hopefully it'll get here just in time for the weekend. Yeah. All right, let's take a look and show you what's <laughs> happening. As far as the storm names go this year. All righty, we've gone through A, B, C, D, all the way through K. As you know, Katrina, that name is retired. Then the next uh, list will show you the other storm names that are left this season. We have Lee. We did all these already. Lee, Maria, Nate, we've seen them. Rita, yes, we've had that. Stan, now over with. The last advisory was issued earlier this afternoon. Tammy, still going. I'll show you that picture in a moment. There are two names left, Vince and Wilma, and we may see these two develop too. And then realize that... Um, Tropical storm season, hurricane season, doesn't end until November 30th, so it is quite likely that we will have Vince and Wilma developing before the time is over. But for now, we are talking about Tammy. It is a tropical storm, and it did, in fact, make landfall. Here it is here. Well, the center of the storm made landfall. It's a big storm, and it made landfall right along uh, the coast of Georgia here. Winds right now sustained at 50 miles an hour, expected to bring about 3 to 5 inches of rain into Georgia as a tropical storm moving on land, sort of diminishing in intensity. Therefore, it is expected to become a tropical depression within the next oh, 24 hours or so. Here's a look at the forecast track for the system itself. As I mentioned, it did, in fact, make landfall as a tropical storm. Then it moves over land, loses its energy, becomes a depression. 
Then we're going to keep an eye on it and show you what's going to happen in the upcoming days. It will, in fact, influence our weather. Even though it'll be simply a depression, it will give us a good amount of rain. Here's the rain where it is right now along the Carolinas. Also, Georgia seeing its fair share of wet weather. Strong storms and, yes, tornadoes are possible with this system as well. So if you're traveling down the eastern seaboard tomorrow, Call ahead to the airline carriers. We may see some delays with this system. Also, we will see delays across the middle of the nation with this next system that's going to join up with the storm itself, pull up and into our region. For now, though, we are dry. Conditions are beautiful here. Maybe a little sticky for you, maybe a little warm for you because we're out ahead of this cold front. Check it out. There's snow falling. This is a blizzard going on right now in the Dakotas. Yeah, it's happening, and it's on its way here. Of course, we're not going to see the snow. We're not going to see the blizzard just yet, but uh, we have some weather on the way. Temperature right now, 75 degrees at Philadelphia International Airport. Humidity is high at 62%. We do expect fog to develop. Barometer right now, 30.25 inches of mercury. And winds are picking up, warm out of the south at about 10 miles an hour. Here are the low temperatures we expect to see tonight. We expect to see the mid to upper 60s for this region. Then behind the cold front, where we have that cold air, we are expecting to see 30s, 40s. Yeah, it's cold, and all that's heading in this direction, but of course it'll modify by the time it gets here. We don't expect to see our low temperatures in the 30s, but we're going to get there slowly but surely. All right, your forecast for tonight, mostly cloudy conditions. We do expect the fog to develop again. Maybe a few drizzly showers will be out there as well. Don't be surprised by that. Low temperature in the lower 60s. Your five-day forecast with the rain included coming up in a little bit. Arthur? All right, thank you very much, Gina. Well, some young athletes are being honored by a new pro. Philadelphia Phillies center fielder Shane Victorino. That's Philly's rookie Shane Victorino, as you heard, handing out awards at the uh, baseball players from Philadelphia's Department of Recreation. More than 200 kids were at the banquet tonight, which was held at Can Statter's Catering in Northeast Philadelphia. Now, from baseball to softball. Local television and radio cel celebrities came out, dressed down today to help uh, have a little fun for the 2005 Police Athletic League softball game right there. That's CNA's own Nicole Fox. Uh, she was there doing a little catching, as you can see, and she's a lefty. Uh, she was uh, on up an arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, was, uh, she was on the winning team. Way to go, Nicole. TV, print, that team, by the way, beat out radio 5-3. to three. Man, how would you keep me entertained? I've got thousands of things to show you. We can get started whenever you want. Okay. And DVR? Your schedule is my schedule. And satellite? Can I pass? <laughs> Jill? I can't decide between on demand and DVR. Since you have Comcast Digital Cable, you can choose both. I can? And here's how. Comcast Digital Cable with on demand. Now available with DVR. Your TV never had it so good. Well, from fighting terrorism overseas in Iraq to losing everything from Hurricane Katrina, you know, a lot of families have been through quite a lot, quite a trying ordeal. And while a lot of people have experienced either one or the other, tonight we tell you about one family in our area that has gone through the impact of both of those events. CNH's Rachel Fanner is joining us tonight. Rachel is live in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, with more on the Cor Coriello family and their amazing story. Rachel? Well, Vicki and Lou Coriello are originally from Mount Laurel, New Jersey, right here where I'm standing before they actually headed down south. Now, Lou is in the Navy, so he's been all over the world rebuilding different countries. Most recently, he was in Iraq. Now, he was heading back when Mother Nature threw a monkey wrench in his plans and his family's plans. And he and his wife sat down with us tonight to tell us how it all turned out. A good night kiss from daddy never felt so good for five-year-old Natalie Coriella. Her daddy, Lieutenant Commander Louis Coriella, just arrived home after nearly eight months in Iraq. The last several months have been fairly emotional, just uh, anticipating coming home from a long deployment. Coriella's hopes for a reunion like this one Wednesday were dashed in late August when Hurricane Katrina hit. His wife and three children left their home near Gulfport, Mississippi. Folks in Memphis, Tennessee and at that point um, decided to wait until my husband could get home from Atlanta to tell me 
what was there, what wasn't there, what to do. He told me, you know, the school is very damaged, the neighborhoods are very damaged, there's going to be some extensive damage to our home that we have to deal with before you come back, so why don't you just get somewhere safe? Vicki and the kids headed to her mother's house in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, while Coriella's Navy CB battalion was sent to the Gulfport area. They're rebuilding shelters for abused and neglected children, they're rebuilding schools, they're helping clear people's yards, I mean, they're just helping everywhere they can. It was difficult being so far away, but Vicki's two brothers in the National Guard helped her get through it. We have a strong family and uh, we were able to tell Lou, you go down there, you've done a great job in Iraq, go down and fix the people in Gulfport and Long Beach, Mississippi, and know that Vicky's going to be taken care of. Coriella will be deployed again in June. In the meantime, he's focusing well, on his family. Fantastic. This is what it's all about. Uh, this is what I was looking forward to for a long time and just being able to hold the kids and hug and kiss the wife, uh, see my uh, brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law and, and uh, mother-in-law and my dog. Don't forget the dog. You got to kiss the dog, right? Well, uh, Vicki and Lou are both Lenape High School grads. Lots of friends in this area, and as you saw, lots of family coming together to support them. Actually, there'll be a big party here this weekend. And on a side note, they are one of the lucky ones. They got out before the storm. Their house is damaged. They are fixing it right now. They will be able to move back in, but they said out of the 2,800 active duty CBs in the Gulfport, Mississippi area, that 700 of them do not have a place to live. So, Vicki is very active in raising money for those people. There are two different websites. If you want to donate money, go to www.operationhomefront.net. That's been up and running since 9-11. Or you can go to www.americanmilitaryfamily.org if you'd like to donate money to those CBs. And again, he's going to be deployed in June along with a lot of other guys, so they're going to be heading out to fight for our country in overseas. Reporting live in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, Rachel Fanner, CN8 News. They have been through quite a lot, Rachel. As you say, I was just down in the uh, Mississippi area, and those homes are just completely wiped out, and so they need all the help they can get. And it's nice to see sure. that this family, at least, is uh, coping uh, quite nicely. Nice touch with and the balloons, others. too. Yeah, nice touch with the balloons <laughs> on the mailbox. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, well, you know, there is a big party, Art, and we're all invited. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. uh, Sunday. All right. Well, send our regards. Thank you very much, Rachel. Uh, we have another story <laughs> right, we'd like Rachel. to relay as well, and I want you to take a look Look at these uh, four victims. They are also victims of Hurricane Katrina, and they have a new lease on life tonight. They are uh, workers from the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in New Orleans, uh, but they were recently uh, just brought in tonight at Philly International Airport, in style, by the way, because they're going to be working at the Ritz-Carlton Philadelphia. Uh, they were taken in style, as we say, to their new homes. Uh, they're going to be living rent-free in Haddonfield, New Jersey, and then they will start to work uh, tomorrow at the Ritz-Carlton in Philadelphia. Uh, for a smooth transition, the hotel did something really nice. They raised $31,000 uh, for the Hurricane Katrina victims, and the hotel is going to give them uh, passes so they can get to work, and also gift baskets. They're going to give them a $1,000 gift card to spend and $500 in emergency money as well. All right, very nice. Thank you, Arthur. Tonight, we bring you part two of our feature that we call the War at Home. It's a look at how Pennsylvania National Guardsmen have been called upon to leave their homes in the western part of the state to serve in Iraq. In tonight's piece, CNA Sterile Carver introduces us to a pair of military families. In each case, Daddy's not home. He's serving overseas. I, I miss him very much. As Veronica Kovach and her mom Kathy talked to us, she was about to start kindergarten while her dad, Army National Guard gunner Thomas Kovach, was serving in Iraq. Says Veronica, hi, how are you? I am fine, but daddy misses you and loves you. I cannot wait to see you to see how big you got. Right now, the occasional note or emails how they hear from him. The only thing that keeps me going is looking at your pictures and the kids. I think of you all the time, now wondering what you have plan for when I come home. He's been deployed since June of 2004. So for Kathy, that means big events in Veronica and baby brother Ryan's lives have happened with dad thousands of miles away. He's missed our first day of kindergarten. He, he's missed our son's um, first steps. Um, and he wasn't here when he said daddy before he left he said mommy beyond the yellow ribbons in front of the kovach home other reminders of the war are across town at the national guard armory when the unit was deployed their loved ones left behind well wishes on this banner things like thanks to our heroes and keep the faith so for now a lot of the equipment here at the armory sits idle that is about two-thirds of the men and women who normally serve here 
are now serving overseas. Over 150 from this unit alone are in Iraq as the Army is relying more and more on the Guard for manpower. When they sign up to join the Guard, especially in the past 10 years, they know that, you know, there's that opportunity you're going to get deployed. You're going to get put in the harm's way. What harm's way means was drilled home back in August when five Pennsylvania Guard troops were killed in a roadside bombing. Jennifer Batchy says her husband, Sergeant Rick Batchy, got to know many of the guardsmen killed in that attack. I don't want the boys to see me cry and upset, so I hold it in. With every attack, she became more worried. Since the deployment over a year ago, Jennifer has been left to raise two-and-a-half-year-old Bryce and four-year-old Brady on her own. She was pregnant with Brock at the time Rick was sent over. He's now 13 months old. My oldest son, he has a rough time mainly when he goes to bed at night because his dad routinely put him to bed, you know, did things like that with him. And so it's usually, you know, I miss my daddy. Treasure. For all the stress on Jennifer and the boys, she's counting the days until her husband returns home. And until then, she takes each day as it comes. It's something that I have to do. It's something that I'm sure you yourself would do if you were in the situation. Same with any neighbor that I have, any friend or family member that I have. You just have to do what you have to do. In Johnstown, Pennsylvania, Daryl Carver, CN8 News. The unit of the two families we just profiled is scheduled to return home later this fall, and when they do, Kathy Kovach says she has a surprise for her husband. Tickets for his favorite team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Coming up. Well, coming up in sports, we've got the latest on the birds and their plans for kicker David Aker. Plus, the home opener for the Flyers. It started out strong. How would it end? The pictures from the center with Peter Forsberg. When we come back in CNA Sports. Night Beat with Barry Nolan, weeknights 11.30 Eastern on CN8. Your CN8 headlines tonight. Philadelphia police say Wallace Moody was abducted at gunpoint today. Moody was friends with Sam Derry III, whose body was found burning in an alley yesterday. Derry is also the stepfather of rapper Deanie Siegel. Authorities, however, have not confirmed the connection of those two crimes. The Cariello family is back together again after eight months of turmoil. Commander Cariello spent almost a year in Iraq, while his wife Vicki was forced to evacuate from their home in Mississippi after it was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. The couple and the family are now living in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And Philadelphians are flying high now that the Flyers have returned to the rink, but the outcome wasn't what they expected tonight. The Flyers are taking on the New York Rangers at the Wachovia Center, and it was a welcome return after last year's season was canceled due to a lockout. Welcome back to the second half hour of CN8 News at 10 tonight. I'm Arthur Fennell. And I'm Kevin Walsh. Thanks for joining us. Tests are underway to figure out if extra weight on board a tour boat in Lake George, New York, led to that deadly weekend accident. Investigators are shifting weight around on a boat similar to the Ethan Allen today. 20 elderly tourists were killed on Sunday when the boat flipped over. Meantime, New York Governor George Pataki and safety officials are pushing for tougher rules to protect passengers. The tragic loss of life in this accident uh, could have been prevented uh, by simply requiring uh, the use of personal flotation devices uh, uh, by the uh, passengers that were aboard. As you can see from video coming up here, right inside that door there, several life vests on board were left inside, meaning they were not on the passengers. The boat, the Ethan Allen, is now being held in an airport hangar. There is a disturbing story out of Claremont, Florida, where school district officials there have removed a substitute teacher following an incident with a student. The student's insulin pump began to beep, and the teacher removed it, thinking it was a cell phone. We have this report. He didn't, he didn't ask me what it was, he just grabbed it, so he, as he pulls it, I go, ow, that hurt. Then he goes, give it to me. I, then he pulls it again, and I go, no, it's, it's for diabetes, leave it alone. And he goes, no, it's not. Clifton Hossum says his substitute teacher was yanking on his insulin pump because he thought it was a cell phone, and he'd heard it beeping. Cliff says he tried to explain, even the class chimed in, that Cliff is a diabetic. But he says Richard Malin kept pulling on the pump, which was connected to a catheter in Cliff's leg. And when he pulled it, this front piece came off, like, just like that. 
and ripped right off. I go, do you believe me now? I the least you could have done was, you know, yell my son out and believe him. Cliff's parents say the substitute teacher should have asked or at least listened if he didn't know. And the Lake County School District agrees that's why they've already fired Richard Malin. You could have said, you know, well, will you please show it to me? And the kid could have easily, you know, shown the uh, device, you know, to the teacher. But the Hossums also say they've taken extraordinary steps to make sure the staff at East Ridge High School knows about Cliff's condition, even keeping extra insulin at the school clinic. That information, they believe, should have been passed on to the substitute teacher before he ever stepped foot into the classroom. Should someone have told or warned that substitute teacher? Yes, yes. I believe that 100%. Mm. Philadelphia Eagles are keeping their spirits high despite recent team injuries. You know all about Donovan McNabb and David Akers. Well, today the team started its Go Green campaign, and they sent out the cheerleaders, and the Eagles mascot swoop on hand at St. George School in Port Richmond. They're teaching kids how to properly recycle part of, uh, it's all part of the two-day Eagles Go Green School Recycling Tour. The kids are encouraged to respect the environment, and they were also given a little incentive to recycle all those ink cartridges. Every single one gets your school $3, which is a lot of money, and that adds up. And then at the very end of the school year, the school that has collected the most cartridges gets to win $5,000 from Staples, delivered to you by an Eagles player. Three other schools will get a visit tomorrow as part of the campaign. Well, there's good news and not so good news for the Flyers. Not good news is that they were back on the ice. The season's open. And the good news is there are 81 more games. The bad news <laughs> yeah. is uh, the season over didn't go so well. Well said, guys. But it was great to see them back there. You have to yeah. admit, great to see them skating back there at the Wachovia Center. No doubt about it. It has been too long without hockey in this town. But that did end tonight in front of a sold-out crowd, all dressed in orange at the center. Flyers taking on the Rangers with some new rules and some new faces. And this is one face Flyer fans have been waiting for. Peter Forsberg lacing up for his Philly debut. And he would make an impact early. Flyers down 1-0 when Forsberg finds Simone Gagne. What a pass. He's going to have a big year. Tied at 1 just like that. Flyers lead at 2-1 in the second when we get a look into the future. Watch this. This is rookie Mike Richards. His first NHL goal. First of many, I'm sure. Flyers rolling 3-1. I told you about the new rules changes. Means we're going to see more Vs. Rangers, Michael Nylander on the penalty shot. But watch this. Oh, he hits the crossbar. Yeah, you can hear it. Take another look. No goal here. Does beat Esch, but he hits the crossbar. Flyers still up two. But that's when it falls apart. In the third, Rangers come roaring back. Yarmir Yager, his second goal of the night. New York would add one more, and they rain on this opening day parade. Rangers beat the Flyers 5-3. to three. So, a tough night at the center tonight, and our man Bruce Casella on hand to take it all in. Bruce, it looked good for a while, but then it kind of got away from him, didn't it? It certainly did, but I'll tell you what, we're going to keep things positive here. You know, this place was electric early on. The place was packed. Capacity crowd out there. Everyone was wearing orange. You know what? I have the first goal from young Mike Richards right here. Look at that beauty. Isn't that nice? I also have Mike Richards with me, and he's going to talk about that goal. I know you're disappointed, bittersweet, but talk about your first NHL goal. Um, I know it was a dream come true for you. Yeah, it was. It's something that's kind of waiting for the opportunity to get for a long time, and uh, just kind of a broken play came off the bench, and it hit a skate right on my stick, and I kind of just buried my head and shot it. What was the emotion like early on for this hockey club? You guys had the advantage. You were playing so well early on, but you were unable to sustain that. Yeah, it was a uh, motion packed night. Uh, the crowd got into it really early. Uh, I thought we played well for the first you know, two periods, and uh, I think we had a little bit of a letdown in the third, which is disappointing. But uh, you know, we got work to do, and you know, hopefully we can come back Friday night. One of the things that I thought, and, and you as a player, you'll have to tell me whether this is correct or not, but when you're out there and there's so much emotion, the first night, the place is crazy, you had to be jumping out of your skin. Um, so the letdown had to be there. I mean, you guys played so hard early on, uh, you had to get tired there late. Yeah, the, the crowd was unbelievable tonight. Uh, you know, we, we knew that they were going to come or uh, come here and be really loud. And, you know, we, we expected that, but just not as loud as they were. It was, it was really overwhelming. And, 
you know, to disappoint him tonight. Uh, hopefully on Friday night we can come back with a win. There you go. Okay, Mike, well, congratulations and good luck. That's beautiful there. You'll have that the rest of your life to show your kids and you. grandkids and all that kind of stuff. Your mom and dad are here? How about that? That's awesome. <laughs> hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Congratulations. Look at this handsome guy here. All right, that's it. Uh, we're down here at the Wachovia Center. Flyers uh, do not win, but it was a great night anyway, especially for this guy. Back to you, Murph, in the studio. All right, Bruce Casella. Yeah, I'm glad to see you gave the puck back. I thought maybe you could try to slide that in your pocket. Good night uh, down there at the Wachovia Center. Good job, Bruce, as well. All right, Eagles now, and it is hard to believe it's Dallas week with most of the Eagles talk revolving around injuries. And we told you last night on the news that David Akers, not good, out eight to ten weeks. So today, Mick Moninghoff was with the Birds to find out what they plan on doing next. CN8 reported yesterday that Eagles kicker David Akers will be out for the next eight to ten weeks. But today, Andy Reid refused to put a timetable on the return of his Pro Bowl kicker. We're going to take it week by week and just see how he how he does here. And you know, you know as well as I do, everybody's different and uh, uh, and how they heal. And I'm not going to sit here and throw times at you. We have talked. Um, you know, we didn't get into all the weeks and that. I just, you know, I I know how David is uh, wired. He's a tough kid, and he'll get in a rehab and. Uh, I think it's important that we just see how the, the healing process goes and, and let, the, let the doctors uh, determine that as we go. Regardless, Todd France will be the Eagles' place kicker for the time being. And even though he was 3 of 4 on field goals Sunday in Kansas City, France, along with snapper Mike Bartram and holder Coy Detmer, are still working things out. You know, it's so fresh in, 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 you know, our relationship and everything, you know, getting to know each other. Um, you know, there's there's going to be things working out all year. I mean, there's things, you know, Dave and I and Mike still work on and iron out and, and everything. That's a continuous process, keeping your rhythm and, and timing and all those things. With the Eagles at the Novacare Complex, I'm McMoninghan for CN8 Sports. Well, of course, the Eagles taking on the Cowboys, and here's how it looks. Uh, things have gone bad for the boys in recent years. The Eagles have been in control of this rivalry, winning five of the last six. And if you look at the Vegas line, they should make it six to seven. The Birds three and a half points favorites in Dallas on Sunday. One last word on the Birds. Brian Dawkins and Jeremiah Trotter are both questionable on this injury report today. Neither practice, but both are expected to play on Sunday. All right, finally tonight, the baseball playoffs in full swing. Game two of the ALDS between a pair of Sox, Chicago and Boston. White Sox with a 1-0 series lead. In game two, they trailed 4-2 until this. Angles. Driven long. And with that, the White Sox beat the Red Sox on the home run by Iguchi. Chicago up two games to none. The defending champs a game away from elimination. Game one of the NLDS, Braves and Astros. Tim Hudson on the mound for the Braves. Bases loaded in the third for Morgan Ensberg. He gets the base hit here. Two runs are going to score. This one, all Houston. They win it easy. The final 10-5. to five. Atlanta, 10-5. Uh, to five. Astros take a 1-0 series lead in that one. Some good baseball. Tough night for the Flyers, but you said there's lots of games left. Oh, yeah, you yeah. bet. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of talent on that yep. team. Thank you, Murph. Yep. See ya. Former skin care patients may want to go see the dermatologist more often. Details on that coming up on Health Beat. Plus, our Americans' favorite newlyweds calling it quits. We have the latest rumors on the celeb scoop. And I'm meteorologist Gina Cancellari. We were basically dry today. Same forecast for tomorrow, but things changed drastically as we head into Friday and the weekend. Full details coming up tonight on CNA. Well, the sun is shining on one uh, victim of an uh, evacuee of Hurricane Katrina after a trip to the casino. You see Jacqueline Sherman won $1.6 million while she was playing a slot machine in Louisiana last night. Sherman was staying in a shelter in Lafayette, Louisiana, when she decided, hey, I'm just going to go to the casino and uh, see how things go. Well, it went very well. Amazingly, the uh, lucky winner reportedly spent only 75 cents <laughs> before she hit that jackpot. Wow, what a great story. That's fantastic. <laughs> I wonder uh, how many relatives have called her over. I, I think a lot. <laughs> hey, some, just been thinking about you. And some yeah. old friends yeah. coming out of the uh -huh. world. Got any cash you can lend me right yeah. now? A lot of people uh, need some help. Maybe yeah, we know that out. story. Yes, weather. Okay, we have a couple things to talk about. We're watching the same two systems we've been talking about all week long, and we're still watching them. We're still waiting for them to get here, and they will drastically, drastically, drastically. change our weather.
Drastically. Drastically. Let's take a look at the satellite. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Two systems, one to the south, that's Tropical Storm Tammy. Yes, Tammy made landfall a couple hours ago along the coast of Georgia. It's this big mass of clouds that you see right here. We expected to see about three to five inches of rain falling in the Carolinas and Georgia as this continues to make landfall and eventually dissipates down to a tropical depression, which basically is an area of low pressure. All right, so we're watching this system. Check out our conditions, though. Pretty nice right now. Then, back to our west, there's another system that we're watching. It's a cold front. This is a classic cold front out ahead of it. Really warm, sticky air behind it. Cold weather. We're talking beneath these clouds right here, snow falling in the Dakotas right now. And uh, the cold weather is going to continue to uh, sort of pull down from Canada as we head into the upcoming days. And this entire weather system will move off to the east pick up this weather system here and then pull it through the Philadelphia area. So we are expecting our weather to change, but not tonight, not tomorrow either. Temperatures looking like this right now, 75 degrees in Allentown. It's sticky too. Philadelphia, 75 degrees. Elizabeth, 73 degrees. Atlantic City, 69. 72 in Lancaster, 72 also being reported in Baltimore. And we do have a breeze starting to pick up and do expect to see a breeze around tomorrow as well. Allentown right now just three miles an hour, but Philadelphia reporting sustained wind over a three minute period of 10 miles an hour. Wilmington, Delaware, 13 miles an hour, and that's some good news. We do expect to see some fog developing tonight out ahead of this system and out ahead of this system. So the breeze that will be around will be able to push the clouds around somewhat. But for now, we still have this area of high pressure influencing our weather, still waiting for these two weather systems to join up and move through. Not going to happen tomorrow, though. We will see the clouds increasing tomorrow night, and there is a possibility of the showers starting tomorrow night, but not tonight. Mostly cloudy conditions, patchy morning fog, Low temperatures tonight in the lower 60s. Here's a look at the precipitation forecast, and we don't expect to see our rain starting just yet. We're waiting for this area to come through and then this area to come down and move through. Will not happen tomorrow, but it looks like Friday we're going to see it then. So high temperatures tomorrow still on the warm side, still unseasonably warm. We're talking 79 in Doylestown and Trenton, Philadelphia, 80 degrees. Redding expecting a high temperature of 81, mostly cloudy. Warm and muggy, high temperature in the upper 70s to low 80s. Then on Friday, we're talking a good amount of rain, one to four inches expected. Lingering into Saturday, and that's when we really cool down. 63 for the high, 45 for the low. Then on Sunday, we dry out, cool conditions, 62, 45. Monday, warming up a little bit, staying dry. 64 for the high, 46 for the low. Kevin? Thank you, Gina. Discount airline JetBlue has landed at another airport in our region. JetBlue today started flights out of New Jersey's Newark Liberty International Airport. The airline is starting off at Newark with nonstop service to two Florida destinations, Fort Lauderdale and Orlando. Political dignitaries uh, joined acting Governor Dick Cody to welcome JetBlue to Newark. Today is a win-win for everyone. Your arrival here today means more flights and more flexibility and more choices for the millions of people drawn to the convenience of this airport. Starting on October 19th, JetBlue will add more service to cities like Fort Myers, Tampa, and West Palm Beach, Florida. Service to San Juan, Puerto Rico starts November 17th. Well, there is a new tool for monitoring gas prices out there, mapgasprices.com. That's a new website that will let you map gas stations in your area, then compare the prices and find the cheapest prices around. For example, if you were to type in Havertown, Pennsylvania, you'd find a Hess station that sells regular gasoline at $2.89. And there's also a Sunoco station that sells it at $3.49 on the high end. The developers of that site are hoping to send a firm message to gas station owners and oil executives not to gouge prices. There's a new survey that finds that wireless phone customers are more likely to, than ever before to hang up and, and give up on their provider and go get another one if the service stinks. The J.D. Power and Associates survey finds that 20% of customers will switch to another carrier within a year if they're not satisfied. That's almost double the number from last year. By the way, if you're curious, here's how they uh, rate the top providers. Verizon and T-Mobile tied for the top spot, followed by Alltel, Nextel, and Singular. Sharp losses on Wall Street today. As we head to the break, here are your closing numbers. Stopping tonight's health beat, it seems earlier detection and better treatment is paying off in the fight against cancer. 
New numbers show death rates from all cancers have gone down about 9 percent from 1993 until 2002 in the United States. Death rates were lower in men than women, and more American women are being diagnosed with cancer. These findings come from the annual report to the nation on the status of cancer. But there is some discouraging news about skin cancer. Researchers say patients who were treated for melanoma still run a high risk of having it come back. In fact, patients had an 11% risk of having a second tumor within a year, and 31% of those who had two cases of the disease developed a third tumor within five years. The study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. In our Celeb Scoop 4 tonight, well, Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes certainly don't let grass grow under their feet, do they? They started dating in April, got engaged in June, and now People Magazine reports that Cruise and Holmes are expecting a baby. Cruise's spokeswoman says that Tom and Katie are very excited. But this would be uh, Holmes's first child. Cruise has two other children from his marriage to Nicole Kidman, and this would be his third. Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey can't seem to catch a break. They've been denying reports all year that their marriage is unstable, and today they released a statement that the rumors are simply not true. U.S. Weekly reported that they uh, broke up last weekend, and the magazine stands by that story. But despite that, Jessica and Nick will be celebrating their third anniversary on October the 26th. And Lindsay Lohan is uh, recovering from a car crash, her second one in just four months' time. The 19-year-old actress was reportedly trying to uh, outrun the paparazzi when her convertible collided head-on with a van yesterday. She was taken to a nearby hospital and treated for minor injuries. Uh, her last car crash, by the way, happened in May, and it led to a new state law aimed at, um, also at celebrity photographers and trying to keep them contained. Hey, people like to yap after work over a few beverages. We'll tell you, you know, why, you know, you may want to leave Fido at home alone. This is a CN8 Extra on the set of CN8's Money Matters Today with Mary Caracoli. The real money issues that all of us have, that's what the show is about. There are so many financial shows to choose from. CNA's Money Matters Today is unique, giving useful information on everyday finance concerns. The history of money TV is having Wall Street analysts on. We don't do that. We have experts on who will give you good information, people answering your money questions, your real-life money questions. There's not enough of that, and that's what we try to do. Mary makes the world of finance make sense for you. She breaks down complicated issues and delivers them in easy-to-understand language. We arm people with really good information so that they make good decisions for their life. Now, these are decisions that will pay off years down the road. When your money matters, there's only one choice. Money Matters Today, weeknights 8 Eastern, exclusively on CN8, the Comcast Network. CN8 Extra, always more of the shows you like to watch. Recap of tonight's top story. A kidnapping this morning in Philadelphia may be related to the murder of Beanie Siegel's stepfather. Samuel Derry III's bullet-riddled body was found burning yesterday in an alleyway. Derry's friend Wallace Moody was kidnapped outside of his home. Both crimes are under investigation. High temperatures tomorrow still above where we should be for this time of year. We're talking the low 80s, upper 70s for most of us. Doylestown expect a high of 79 degrees. Then rain enters the picture Friday, all day. Heavy rain, one to four inches expected. Cooler temperatures following the rain Saturday night. Look at that low, 45 degrees. Then on Sunday, we're clear, we're cool, we're dry. 62 for the high, 64 for the high on Monday. Flyers opening night. They led this game 3-1, but in the third, Rangers come roaring back. That's Yarmir Yager, his second goal of the night. New York would add one more, and they ran on the opening day parade of the Flyers. Rangers beat the Flyers 5-3. All right, finally tonight, you've heard of happy hour, no doubt. <laughs> Yeah, yap, yap. This is Yappy Hour. Uh, both uh, two-legged, uh, four-legged friends and their two-legged owners, they all got together at uh, 32 degrees in Philadelphia. Uh, some of the pooches even got all dressed up for the occasion, and the owners did too. All of the proceeds from this event benefit the Pennsylvania SPCA, and uh, we hear that some of the minglers there uh, went home with a serious case of puppy love. Uh yeah. yeah. See, all of them, though, didn't get picked up. And the ones, and some of them were quoted as saying that dating these days is just rough. Oh, yeah, thank you very gone. much. Rough. Nah, it's rough. It was, dating yeah. rough. I love ending with the dog story. It's a uh, dog-eat-dog world out there. Yeah. yeah. Oh.
<laughs> what do you got on there? I got dog, the dog <laughs> dog. <laughs> we gotta go. We're out of time for our 10 o'clock report. Thanks uh, for being there. Out of bounds with Lou Tilly's on next. We'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Have a good night. <laughs>